Greetings traders, this is Mohan here and I'm doing a special tutorial today due to the request of uh, many of our uh, members and traders here on how to add special level lines to your chart using what I what are called constant lines. First of all, if you can see down here, I'm, I've added the hyperscalp indicator to a boomerang chart and I'm going to show you how to add additional lines on the hyperscalp to set up different levels of resistance and support. Now there's already an automated two point or two level stop here, 2.00 here, which shows you when the the uh, the hyperscalp here has moved under that two point level. Now what I've determined this is for a mini NASDAQ contract up here, symbol NQ, and then I'll go ahead and show you how you can do this for other contracts too. But on mini NAS, I've determined that the two levels you want to watch for resistance and support on the downside is the 7.0 level and the 3.50 is the midway between that. Now all I'm doing here, this is a demonstration of how to add these lines on it. I'll show you in, in a detail so you can follow this along. First of all, right click on your chart and that'll bring up your indicator page shown here. You scroll down into the C section here and you find what's called constant lines. See that right there? Constant lines. So you click on that and now you have the constant line indicator that you can that is added to this chart. Now the real now mine's a little bit pre-made so I have some different levels already made with colors and everything. When you get a get it up on yours it'll all be mostly blank. These levels may have a a zero or a default five or something in there and the colors may all just be gray. But the way you do it is you first of all right click on the chart, go to constant lines and then add that to your boomerang chart. Now the next thing you want to do, this is probably very important to uh, remember, I want you to do this first in most cases, is go down to the panel. Now the panels are, panel number one is up here where the chart is, panel number two is here where the bias index number one is, panel number three is where the market force indicator is, the bias index number two, and panel number four is the hyperscalp. See that? Panel one, two, three, four. It'll always be like this if you do this on any of your charts. So the first thing you want to do is go to the panel and click on the right here and you'll get a drop down menu and put that on panel four. Now whatever lines that you apply will go on to panel four which is where we want them. So on hyperscalp the line value for the mini NAS that I use, it's really really good tool, is seven point O or I always put the point O and let the system figure it out for you. Minus, now you see that minus sign here? This is very important. You have to have that minus sign in here. Say this is blank, for example. You can't just put another 7 in. You have to add that minus in, then 7.0. That's going to give you the downside level of 7. You see that? And then similarly, I have 0.50 as kind of a default setting. You switch that to 3.50, half of the 7 for the mini NAS. And then again, backspace here, but make sure and keep that minus side in for 3.50. You see that? That's the first step. So again, um, and make sure it's set calculation on bar close to false. So you keep a constant updated uh, constant line there. And again, uh, it's up to you if you want to normally... Um, you would want to have a uh, price marker here because that will you'll have the lines will give you well you don't need them I keep it false usually because I already know that it's at 7.0 but if you keep that on true then it'll show the actual 7.0 there I don't think it's that necessary but it's nice if you want that so I've just as again on a default I have the upper level which would be like the more or less like the resistance or sell level at colored magenta and then you just click on the plus sign and that opens it up and that allows you to change this to a dash or whatever uh, I'm gonna change it to a solid line here 
And then on line two, same thing. I'm going to change it from a dash to a solid. And then what I'll do is I'll keep the 350 levels dashed. Again, this is just set as default. You just click on the plus, and that opens it all up. But instead of gray, which won't show up too good in this black chart, I'm going to click on the right side here and switch that to white. Or white smoke is good, too. It's a little off-color white there, not just too bright. And again, switch that to white smoke. Now, again, double check your settings, which is minus plus 7, minus 7, 3.5, minus 3.5. Calculate on bar, close, false. And then what I always do is on any indicators I put on these boomerang charts is that you click on the label and backspace and it clears the field. That way it won't appear up here and you won't have all these labels up here uh, cluttering up your chart. But if you want them on there, of course, just leave the field in there. And then when I hit apply, lo and behold, down in the bottom line here, there are the there's that magenta resistance level up there and the support level down here at plus 7 and minus 7 and the 350 lines here. Now, for me, I'm just looking at first glance here. Maybe the two points is a little bit intense. I like them usually a little lighter. So I'm going to just switch that down to 1 and change this one down here to 1. And let's see how that looks. It's all about experimenting and seeing what until you get exactly the comfort level you want. There, that's a little more comfortable there. And if you don't want the two-point lines in Hyperscalp, just go into Hyperscalp here. And again, they're colored white. What you do, whenever you want to remove a line from any of your charts or anything, just go to the color and color it transparent. That's the top color there. If you color it transparent, it will now disappear from the chart. And you can see those two gray lines are now out. And all we have is the crystal clear white smoke ones, which are at a lighter level there. Now, another little trick is if you want to make those lines slightly thicker or darker, just remove it off of the dashed feature and make it solid. So we just go up to dash and click solid and same here. Just takes a second to adjust these things. You'll find your favorite parameters that you can use. There, that gives more, that actually looks a little better, a solid line there. So now when that's clicked, then you're all set to go. Now of course, whenever you do that, make sure and right click on the chart, go to your templates and save as and find uh, your boomerang setting for your chart and then click OK. What that'll do is save all the change you made with adding the constant lines and <clears throat> adding the um, boomerang to this chart if you hadn't had it on there before. Now whenever you bring up this template you'll always have that on there. Uh, again, so for more information on using Hyperscalp, I do have a video tutorial here in this same resource area on how to use Hyperscalp. But uh, that's how you put the constant lines onto a chart, and that's how you can um, set that up. Now, let me show you something else. Keep in mind, I want to do this while we're here, that if you use any other contract, everything's going to change. I'm again just using the hyperscalp example. It could be on any of these contract uh, indicators or any other indicators you have on here. But let's just for example, let's switch over to uh, ES for example. So give it a minute for the chart to load and uh, once that loads there, keep in mind, keep an eye on hyperscalp and you'll see that it will change completely and there are different levels of support and resistance, which um, this is going back into today. So what you again you'd have to do. Let me try. They're a little bit flat here. Let me 
try, I wasn't sure what was going on that day, let's try the YM contract and see what, if we get a different reading. Oh, they're still loading the data, it looks like here. Hold on a second. Now, I don't use YM regularly, so it may take just a minute to load the data here. There we go. This this will give us a better example. Now, if you're going to change these lines and you're going to use another contract, like in this example, YM, you're going to have completely different configurations. The way you figure out what the support and resistance levels are for other contracts is go down to the bottom of the screen, squish everything together, and it should become completely obvious. Just run your cursor down it. And one thing I often do, because I will do this to get an exact number, I'll go over like 10, char 10 charts at least, maybe more, just to get it real. Go up here and click on the pencil up here and go down and click horizontal line. See the pencil will appear on your screen, and then you can see right here, look at that, it's like a corresponding line there. So what you can do is just put a temporary line in there. I have mine set to orange, which is, it's it'll show the 27, say 28 level, and then you go down here and see if it's about the same on the cell side, and it is right around 28. So all you do is you just click on F6 on your uh, keyboard and that'll bring the arrow up again and go ahead and just set that also at 28 you see now what you do again you can just squish your chart together and then you go back over a chart over a bunch of charts make sure you're on the regular time and confirm that that level is a very normal kind of resistance level for in this case hyperscalp or like I said any indicator you happen to be using to change the constant lines and then because these can be grabbed and adjusted very easily whereas the constant lines it's a little more difficult to change them I mean it just takes a second longer but it's so easy here this is how you experiment now look at here on this day the the it was blasting a lot higher so you may find, and this is why you want to go over a lot of charts. I don't have a lot loaded on here. But I'm just giving you the example how to do this. Do like at least 10 charts and go over these levels. And you might say like here, for example, well, I'm going to move this one up just slightly to correlate with more of a general resistance area. And you see that's working out better up there. This one, you know, obviously a little too high on some of the charts because there wasn't as much market force. But then you see up here, stronger resistance. And again, you can adjust the upside and the downside every one. Then when you've done this, like with literally like 10 charts or so, like look how nicely that's correlating down there. And up here at the 28 level as well, but I remember I moved this one up here a little bit. So again, just depending on, you know, maybe say you want to put it at 31, and you find after going over 10 charts that that 31 level ends up being just the right thing. What you can do then is if you already have constant lines loaded, just right click on your chart, bring up the constant lines, and you've already done your homework and you got those lines here makes it so much easier then just take the constant lines and adjust them right to the level shown on the right side there 30.25 or whatever the number is 26.99 or 27 and just put that in your constant lines click OK and those lines will appear there then you just click on these lines move them and uh, go ahead and you just grab these and pull them a little bit off the constant line right click on them and remove them you see what I mean so though that's how that's the best way to do that for any contract that you want to do you know that way you can do your own homework and find what those exact resistance levels tend to be and mark them with your constant lines so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and thanks very much for joining with me today and feel free to email me anytime if you have any questions at mohan at daytradersaction.com